welcome to Daily Current Affairs by Neo IAS. Today is 7th August 2019 and the topic we are going to discuss is Beti Bachao, Beti Padao, that's a program. Then the Kaleshwaram Lift Irrigation Project, National Handloom Day, Mount Elbrus, Map Aided Program and the previous year question revision series. So coming to the first topic that is Beti Bachao, Beti Padao. So this is in news because the concerned ministry which is the Union Ministry of Women and Child Development. So they are organizing a felicitation for all the uh, districts and the states who have successfully implemented this Beti Bachao, Beti Padao scheme in the country. So basically this was a scheme which was launched by Prime Minister in 2015 in Haryana, Panipat, Haryana in uh, uh, on 22nd January. So this is basically a tri-ministerial effort that means three ministries are involved in making of Beti Bachao, Beti Padao Antolan. One is the Ministry of Women and Child Development that is a, the prime concerned ministry. Then there is a health ministry involved, health and family welfare ministry and the human resource development ministry as well. So it is like uh, the one of the flagship program of the government. It basically addresses sex ratio, child sex ratio. So there is a declining trend of child sex ratio in the country so this will be addressing that particular thing and also related to empowerment of women in their life cycle the entire thing starting from the school life then the employment the pregnancy after pregnancy everything in a cycle okay so CSR it is defined as a number of girls per, per thousand boys in the age group of zero to six years okay so this has resulted in increased awareness sensitization and also the conscious building around the issues of declining child sex ratio in the public domain okay so basically this is a central sector scheme central sector scheme means 100 percent financial assistance for everything is provided by the central government okay so this assistance will have a district level component and the funds are directly released to the district component uh, for the smooth action of the scheme directly by central government okay so there are some specific objective for the scheme like uh, preventing the gender based uh, sex selective elimination then it will also ensure the survival and protection of the girl child also they will provide education they'll ensure education and participation of the girl child okay so the concerned ministry for the implementation of the scheme is ministry of women and child development Okay, they are the nodal ministry. The, there will be support from state social welfare uh, department also. They will be done in partnership with various departments like the health department, education department. But the concerned ministry who is a nodal ministry would be the ministry of women and child development. Okay, so the next topic we are going to deal today is Kaleshwaram lift irrigation project. So this is in news because uh, it is related to lifting more water uh, from you know next year onwards so Kalesha that is not our concern here our concern is about how much uh, what is Kaleshwaram lift irrigation project so this particular project aims to irrigate around 45 lakh acres of land for two basic crops okay in a year okay and it also meet drinking water requirement also for 70 percent of the state so basically two functions are there for lift irrigation project that's the Kaleshwaram lift irrigation project one is drinking water requirement and the next one is irrigation for two crops. Okay, so what they do is they harness the flood waters of Godavari. Okay, and they will divert this water to telling uh, the drought hit region of uh, uh, Telangana, basically the Rayalusima region. Okay, so the project it will divert the, the flood waters of Godavari to Sripada Sagar uh, Yellam, uh, Yellampalli Barrage. And from there, it will be uh, transferred to Mallana Sagar. Okay, so there is this Pranahida confluence also. So Pranahida is another river. So it is uh, uh, it is the uh, you know tributary of Godavari. So that is a confluence point of Pranahida to Godavari. So that that will be transferred to there. So Kaleshwaram for a project, it will uh, support the Mission Kakatiya and Mission Bagiratha. So Mission Kakatiya is basically. Uh, there were many, uh, you know, reservoirs built by the Kakatiya dynasty of uh, of Andhra Pradesh or Telangana. So what they did is they created many, uh, many reservoirs. The kings created many reservoirs earlier because earlier also it was a drought hit area. 
So what happened now is that uh, now these uh, reservoirs are facing extinction. It is uh, you know becoming uh, uh, dry. So the, the Telangana government has taken some projects in order to restore these Kakatiyas. So Kaleshwaram Rift Irrigation Project similarly have some history. Like they are uh, from the, uh, there, is, there was one original Pranahida Chevela Lift Irrigation Scheme which was taken up by Congress government in 2017. This is you know like a follow up of that particular scheme. So after the formation of Telangana in 2014, what happened the TRS government, they redesigned the project on the ground that the original one had too many environment obstacles. So they wanted to rectify all this and also the earlier uh, the project has very low water storage pressure. So they also curbed this with a new project and after conducting you know uh, this uh, advanced LIDAR, uh, the government separated the original component serving the Adilabad area as the Pranahida project and renamed the rest of it as Kaleshwaram. So, uh, right now there is two projects Pranahida as well as Kaleshwaram but in two different areas. And coming to, as I told you the Kakatiya project it was started by uh, Telangana government in order to restore the tanks that, that has been built by the Kakatiya dynasty. And Mission Bagiratha is a scheme again launched by uh, Telangana government. This is for safe drinking water. Okay, it, it is uh, to provide 100 liters of clean drinking water per person in rural household and also in urban household it will be 150 liters per person. Okay, so the next project, next topic we are going to deal today is the National Handloom Day. So this is in news because 5th National Handloom Day is celebrated across the country. So 7th August is uh, decided as a day to honor the handloom weavers in the country and also to you know highlight uh, the handloom industry of the country. So the union government has decided 7th August as the National Handloom Day. So this particular initiative of the government can create an awareness about the importance of the handloom industry. Now is the era of power loom industry. So we have to revive our hand, handloom industry again. So this is a baby step in order to you know create awareness about the handloom industry. So August 7 was chose as uh, the National Handloom Day because it, the Swadeshi movement which was launched on the same day in 1905 in Calcutta town war was uh, done put, uh, to protest against the partition of Bengal by, that, uh, by the British government. So what we did is we, we took the same date in order to commemorate the importance of handloom uh, industry in India. And the movement uh, had aimed at reviving the domestic products and production processes at that point of time. So the first National Handloom Day, it was inaugurated in 2015 uh, by uh, Prime Minister Narendra Modi at the centenary of Madras University in Chennai. So more than 50% of the total weaver population of India, they reside in the eastern part and also the northeastern part. And the main speciality is majority of the employ uh, employees are women. So this year's main event will be at Bhuvaneshwar in Odisha. So uh, why Bhuvaneshwar is uh, chosen as a, uh, as a point to commemorate is because of its rich tradition of handlooms. Okay, so the next topic we are going to cover is Mount Elbrus. So this is in news because Raksha Rajya uh, Mantri, that is the Defense Minister, Shri, uh, Shri Prashad Yeso Naik, he flagged off an expedition team of Himalaya Mountaineering Institute uh, that is in Darjeeling, from Darjeeling to Mount Elbrus. Mount Elbrus is in Russia. So you can use this particular news in two different ways. Either you can note it as a daily current affair news or you can either use it in the map aided program as well. Okay, so talking about the news, the expedition team of eight professional mountaineers, they are planning to summit Mount Elbrus. Mount Elbrus is the highest peak in the European continent. Okay. And they are going to hoist the national flag on the top of the mountain to, you know, commemorate the 73rd Independence Day. So, this is like, uh, this is also to showcase the importance of yoga activities to international community. Okay. They will also perform asanas in the top of Mount Elbrus. Okay. So, Mount Elbrus is basically a dormant volcano in the Caucasus Mountains in the southern Russia that is near to the border of Georgia. So this is like the highest mountain in Europe. 
So the volcano, this is currently considered as dormant and the Elbrus, it was active only during Holocene and um, uh, since 1986, Elbrus has been incorporated into um, uh, Prail Brusi National Park that is one of the protected national parks of Russia. Okay, now coming to map aided program. So, we are continuing with the mountain passes of Uttar Pradesh, sorry, Uttarakhand. So, uh, the first one we are going to talk about is uh, Singha Gatti Pass and Kim Loga Pass. Okay, so this is actually not a very famous pass but it is connecting Garhwal to Kinnor. So, the speciality is there are many passes which are connecting Garhwal to Kinnor. So, many are known, many are unknown. So, these two are also the passes of Uttarakhand. You have to remember it is connecting Garhwal area to Kinnor. The next pass we are going to talk about is Pachu Khandi Pass. So, this is another pass which is connecting Yamunotri with Harkidun. So, this is very important because it is connecting to Yamunotri. Uh, so, there is another pass called as Bali Pass also which is connecting to Yamuna Uttri. This is equally important. The next part uh, pass we are going to talk about is Damdhar Khandi Pass. So, uh, this is one of the most difficult routes in Uttarakhand because this is connecting to Swarga Rohini and the Black Peak. So, that is basically two peaks of Uttarakhand. So, this is connecting that two peaks. The next one we are going to talk about is Darwa Pass. Darwa Pass is it's a classic route between Yamuna and Bhagiradi Valley. So, Bhagiradi Valley, Bhagiradi River is going to join Ganga. Uh, it's a head stream of Ganga. So, uh, the Darwa Pass is connecting Yamuna with Bhagiradi uh, Valley. And the next uh, one is Kalindi Kal. Kalindi Kal is it's one of the highest coal, one of the most challenging route in India. So, this particular thing, this particular pass, they connect Gangotri and Badrinath. It's very important, Gangotri and Badrinath. So, coming to the previous year question revision series, before going to the question, today's question, the, the last question I asked you about was, uh, which one of the following pairs is correctly matched? The question was, Abyssinian Plateau, Arabia, Atlas Mountains, Northwestern Africa, Guyana Highlands, Southwestern Africa and Okavango Basin, Patagonia. So, the answer here is B that is Atlas Mountain and Northwestern Africa. But I want you guys to correctly give me where Abyssinian Plateau is, where Guyana Highland is and where Okavango Basin is. I want you guys to comment it in the comment section. Okay. So, coming to today's question. Variation in the length of day, daytime and the nighttime from the season to season are due to the first option is Earth's rotation on its axis. The second is Earth's revolution around the sun in an elliptical manner. The third one is latitudinal position of the place. And fourth option is revolution of the Earth on a tilted axis. Also, write the answer of this particular question in the comment section. So that our, our session is more interactive and <coughs> engaging. Okay. So that's all for today guys. I hope you enjoyed the session. Please be more interactive by, uh, by answering whatever I am asking in the, in the session. And please try to uh, get where the, those places are. So that's all for today. Thank you so much. Good night.